Utco is the next company that we're speaking with. Uh, the stock's uh, up more than 80% in this year. That's 2024. Uh, and of course, I mean, uh, the details of the PMA Y2 uh, <clears throat> will be closely watched by companies like Hoodco and what this would mean. Sanjay Kulshetra is CMD at the company. Uh, he's with us to take some questions. Uh, Mr. Kulshetra, thank you for joining us. Good morning, sir. Prashant, this side. Uh, could you uh, sort of parse through the details for this uh, PMA Y2? And what does this mean? I mean, step by step, if you can just look at it and compare it to w where it was earlier. Uh, the, the first part of the scheme and how this differs. Uh, how is it better? How is it worse? And what does it mean for Hoodco? Go on, sir. Thank you, Prashant. Good morning. Uh, I think PMAY is the landmark decision of the government of India and government has came out with PMAY rural as well as urban. And the guidelines are also out and uh, a lot of demand is there for the PMAY. So there are two crores households for the rural and one crores for the urban. So all these kind of opportunity which are coming out of the PMAY, which is actually for the affordable housing. The program is amounting uh, from 10 lakh crores and 3 lakh crores. So total 13 lakh crores potential capital expenditure will be there uh, in the entire country. So 3 crores households, 13 lakh crores uh, kind of money. It gives a good potential as a lender to the company like Hutco, which is primarily into the housing and infrastructure development financing. So this is actually a, a step uh, forward from the PMAY 1.0 because government has uh, came out with certain monitoring frame or monitoring framework also to assure and ascertain that a time bond implementation of the program will come. Then there was a latent demand in the market and there is a commitment of the government that everybody should have, especially in the middle class, they should have uh, a house and a roof on the, their head. So they had came out with the uh, interest subsidy schemes as well as affordable route, uh, housing on rent also. So all these kind of measures the government is taking is towards that every Indian should have one house on their top. And so, if I talk about the house and house is the epicenter of the infrastructure. Yeah, no, yeah. absolutely, absolutely. Uh, just to get into the specific details, I mean, there was some talk at the margin when the scheme was under formulation that there will be an interest rate cap. So, you know, you borrow from the NHB uh, uh, with the with a spread. I mean, uh, you know, you can only lend at a certain, up to a certain rate. Uh, is That is not part of this, right? No, no, it is not part of this. It will be a totally a commercial call by the HUTCO to extend the loans for the counterpart funding, which is we envisaging that it will be more than 1 lakh crores. But the conservative figures stand as 1 lakh crores. And uh, at the same time, we are trying to, to tap the resources to generate some low-cost funding, maybe from the Japanese market or the USD, so that or the multilateral uh, banks. And we are talking with the multilateral banks for back-to-back -back kind of funding. We want that the concept of the affordable housing which is being launched by the government should be supported by the HUTCO also. And that's why we are we are searching and tapping all the resources wherever the affordable rates are available. Uh, uh, Mr. Kulshestra, just to get the number right, you mentioned 1 lakh crore. Is that the amount you're looking to disburse under PMAY2? Yeah. Uh, under PMAY, we had already done more than 43,000 crores. Mm. This time, uh, it will be very conservative to go with 1 lakh crores kind of uh, a disbursement, maybe in 3 to 4 years of the time. Okay, fair enough. So, that's that's by how much you could grow, I mean, and what it will add to your overall disbursements that you do this year. Let's talk about uh, the kind of yield, the kind of profitability that this, this sort of lending, uh, you know, uh, can bring to you. Because the understanding is that, uh, you know, apparently... Uh, Hoodco is also the, the nodal agency for uh, consultancy work and all kind of you know technical studies around PMAY. So, so right. does that right. uh, you know uh, you know how does right. that impact the yield? Does that give you any sort of consultancy fee? Just trying to understand how profitable this business can be for you. I think this is a good profit, a profitable kind of venture for the company. Uh, our yields uh, will be around nine percent and uh, the assets will be much more secured. Uh, so yield will not be a problem because states around 9%, uh, they are ready to pay at 9%. Uh, presently also we are lending at around 9% or 9.09%. So yield will be in the range of 9 to 9.1 or 9.2. So that will not be a 
matter of fact here. But at the same time, government has given us the responsibility for the appraisals and the desk appraisal of these schemes. This will rather give us a uh, understanding and the potential to understand what kind of demand, what kind of issues are coming of the P uh, to, from the PMAY in state to state basis. Because our presence is there in every state, our regional offices work from there. So our infrastructure supports these kind of concepts to work with the sure. state government to come towards the central government and and work as a tandem between both the governments. So, sir, sir, just to get the timeline right, this disbursal of 1 lakh crores, it happens over how many years? What are you projecting? Because I think the original guidance was that your book will grow by 25%, you'll do 35,000 crores of disbursement. I'm guessing that did not factor in PMAY2. Just, just tell us uh, the timelines and what is the guidance now for this year? So your figures are very correct. In the first quarter, we had already done plus 12,000 crores and we are on the right path to achieve 35,000 crores. And this we had envisaged when the PMAY was not there. So now since the PMAY is there and we are talking with all the states and the stakeholders, at what kind of disbursements they are looking at. And I am I am sure, pretty sure that uh, with the kind of push and the need, in the fourth quarter, the disbursement under PMAY will start. But at that this point of time, I may not be uh, capitalizing those amounts. But yes, we will be revising our target beyond 35,000 crores uh, after uh, November or after December, looking at the status of the scheme. How much higher can you revise it by? I mean, looking at the status of the scheme, is, is there a broad expectation here? 35,000 crores turns into say, increase by, say, 5,000, 10,000, 15,000 crores? I am expecting at least 10,000 should start coming because uh, because states are already prepared uh, with their DPR. So I am expecting that the bidding and all these tender effects will come forward. So there could be an upside risk by 10,000 crore to your current target of 35,000 crores. I wanted, uh, uh, you know, a little more color on your liability side of things. Be just wanted to know what proportion of your funding is currently linked to benchmark rates now with the U.S. having cut interest rates. There would be, you know, expectation for the RBI to act as well. How will all of that impact your, uh, you know, margins, the cost of funds? I think this is a very positive story for the infrastructure funding in the country, as the Fed has already cut the 50 basis point, and uh, uh, we are expecting the phenomena to be continued in the Indian markets also. Uh, since our commitment is to fund the infrastructure as, at a sustainable uh, costing and we want that the viable and the sustainable infrastructure should be created for Vixit Bharat. And that is the aim and objective of the government and we are following the aim and objective of the government. At the same time, we are continuously trying, you may have seen that uh, during past year, uh, we had borrowed around 1 billion, uh, 1 billion USD from the international market and which has cut down our cost prominently. So during last quarter, our cost was just slightly less than the 7%. So, if the USD Fed is, uh, is uh, reduced by 50%, 50 basis point, and another 50 basis point is also under discussion, so we may be uh, tapping this resource of USD borrowing in the last quarter after looking at the rate cuts, further rate cuts. So, so it, will, it will give us, give us an opportunity, it will give us an resource, another resource to tap the funds. So, in that case, if you could give us a sense of what your NIMS could be this year and the next year, and also your ROE and ROA targets for this year and the medium term. So our uh, loan book, as we had already discussed, and uh, I think it is in the public domain, that uh, by next fiscal, by FY26, our loan book or AUM will be at 1.5 lakh crores, which is now at 1 lakh crores. We had, uh, we had uh, grown by 30% during last uh, on year to year basis. Regarding yield, it will be in the range of 9.2 or 9.15 to 9.2. It will remain constant. And regarding uh, uh, regarding uh, the spreads, uh, maybe in the range of 2%, 1.9 to 2%, we will be comfortably maintaining, maintaining that spread. And regarding NIM also, I think 3.5% will be the absolute figures that we will be maintaining. And uh, 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 ROE and ROE. Last question. Uh, ROE and ROE. Ah, regarding ROE, we yeah, ROE we had improved from 11% to now we are at around 12.7%, and next year we are targeting it will be plus 13, and we will be settling in next year by 14% of the ROE. And regarding ROE, it is 
2.5 percent, which is in line with the market uh, uh, other peer companies. So we will be maintaining 2.5, 2.55 kind of ROA and uh, around 14 percent of the ROE. Okay, all right, uh, Mr. Kapil Shrestha, we'll leave it over there. Thank you very much for giving us a lot of the details on how PMAY 2.0 is going to shape up the fortunes of the company.